Is that regular standard standard uh, model paint or you, you can specialized buy, paint? You can buy Gundam. You can buy Gunpla paint. Um, Gunpla paint. You know, Bandai will be happy <laughs> to sell that to you too. Mm. And um, so yeah, there, there's a there's a lot of uh, cool stuff. Um, oh, the Xia MG. Yeah, I saw actually the, the box for the Gundam Xia MG. Um, uh, uh, in at at Otakon at one point, it's it's like this big. I mean, it's just a box. Uh, it's it's a huge model kit and it lights up. Ooh, yeah, it's, they have little LEDs in there. It's gorgeous. Whoa, and it's like a hundred bucks. Or I never thought or something. LEDs inside. Yeah. <laughs> so all the people who are makers and hackers mm. and tinkers could maybe even do something even more. Have Absolutely. it record or well, talk or I mean, you, you imagine you scale this up by you know be basically twice the size there's a fair amount of space in there for little batteries and lights and such. <laughs> so yeah you can absolutely have fun motion sensor <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> i said that on my desk <laughs> <laughs> somebody uses my mouse no nope. <laughs> all right so moving on to e7 getting into the arms gotta love these winged arms yeah. a giant shoulder pad <laughs> 80s style g1 so do most people get their kits from online stores or do they go to where do they go well you can get them at conventions um the advantage of conventions is that you're not going to pay shipping um it's generally going to be a little less expensive at a, a con but you're limited to the um inventory they bring so for example i got this at otakon last year um or maybe in katsukon I think it was Katsukon. The um, uh, Gun and Bill Fighters had just come out like a month or two prior. Uh, mm -hmm. So it must have been Katsukon. And, um, and they only had three of those. They only brought three of those. Oh! Because they figured, yeah, it just came out. <laughs> it's only it's been fan sub. You know, what, what, are the, what are the odds? And I got there Friday at noon and got the last one. <laughs> so you never know. Pays to, pays to be quick. <laughs> exactly. Um, so it, it depends on what you want. Um, but it's easier going online because you can get any model kit you want. Now, of course, they haven't, Bandai has not produced model kits for every single Gundam at every single grade. Oh, they haven't? No. So, I mean, but, course, but every are, single Gundam? or um, I believe every single one, yes. Just not every, you know, every scale. Yeah, not every scale. So, you know, you may want this in extremely high grade and it's not going to be available. Depends. Um, it depends on popularity and lots of other things. Um, so you, you you can do some hunting to find what you're looking for. Um, so there's E7, C12. But yeah, so it's generally it's cons or online. Um, there just aren't that many other other options. Now, of course, in Japan, they have stores for these things. A whole store? A whole store. Um, they have some at the Gundam Well, station. with all the different possibilities, I, I imagine exactly. there must be a lot of models. And there are a lot of hobby stores that um, you know, sell uh, plastic model kits in general, and they'll sell, they'll sell Gundam too. So you get a lot of these um, little indie stores that um, sell, like you're saying, you know, tank model kits and um, um, model train materials and so forth, and they'll have stacks of Gundam model kits. I did notice at one of the conventions at one of the dealer stores, they did have other other models as well. I saw the mm. Battleship Yamamoto. Yeah, yeah, Yamato, yeah. At, at Yamato. And uh, there was uh, several different scales of it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it really depends on how far you want to go into it. Um, what is that telling me to do? For... Uh, Oh. Oh. I think that's what it's trying to tell you. Um, Part of the yeah, fun is trying to decode where. Yeah, I know. There's what am I supposed to do next? A little bit of uh, kind of guessing on some of these because sometimes the arrangement's not exactly obvious. But they do their best. But the tolerances so far are fantastic. It's it's there's mm, there's not yeah. a lot of. Uh, slop that I've noticed mm -hmm. uh, some models from the 80s <laughs> and 90s had. Yep. So they, they do a precise a precise job they of molding really the, the plastic. Yeah. The tolerances are very, very fine. So I suppose as an industry, it, it's kind of gotten better and better. Yeah. Um, and they've just gotten used to how to, how to build these things. Um, you know, it, it takes 
precision, but once you get everything down, and of course being Bondi, they're a huge toy company. So they have a, a, a lot of resources at their, at their disposal. B1, B2, G1, A30. As long as folks want to build their giant dioramas. Gundam Breaker, I'll have to check that out. A, uh, hmm. So uh, War Fanatic in our chat room is saying that um, there's a video about how to make your own mobile suit called Gundam Breaker. I'm oh. <laughs> Yeah, sign me up. Well, and of course, there's Karatas, which is a, an actual mecha that a guy built. Um, that is like a full-size, well, it's more like a um, Ghost in the Shell, um, Tachikoma style. Oh, and, but yeah, it moves. Tachikoma. It, it responds to voice commands, and it can be yours for, I think it's $2 million. Oh, uh, <laughs> let me, <laughs> let me check my, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a tough one. Um, but he says, yeah, he, he built it and he could, he could produce multiple of them if people are willing to buy them. Mm. So we will see. I suppose if you buy in bulk, you get a discount. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> bulk being three or more. <laughs> But, you know, we're getting to that point where you can really get uh, a lot out of off-the-shelf parts. Okay, so does that go in there? I think so. Well, now, this yeah. builds into a similar category. Mm -hmm. uh, do people 3D print uh, models? So that is has been an interesting um, point recently, is the, that whole... That whole question, because yes, you certainly could. Um, yes, you certainly can. Um, the main issue, honestly, is that the tolerances in a 3D printer these days are not enough for this level of quality. Uh, so so if it was a larger scale, yeah, it might work, but with a fine scale like this. Yeah, exactly. Now, you could do things like there are up on Thingiverse right now. It's one of the big uh, Thingiverse.com. Thingiverse. It's one of the big websites for... Uh, um, 3D printable models, there are several scans of Gundam model kits and such, and just um, 3D prints, or 3D designs. So you could go in there and try to print one of these things as a, as a single object. Um, oh, it's a video game. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. That's cool. Um, as a single object. That means right. without yeah, movable no, no arms? No um, but you could print it as a, um, as a you know, sort of test experiment. Mm. That is, that's certainly an option. This is not fitting in there at all the way they say it should. Hmm. So I don't know what they... Oh, maybe it's a different slot? Um, that goes in there, E7. <laughs> pops in like that. It's got to pop in like that. And this should go in. So this is where sometimes... Slot A, tab B, do not align. Yeah, um, sometimes it's a matter of looking at where it's going to go. And then getting a feel for it from there. So I know that goes there. So I know that should be. Uh, oh, I see. Yep. So what you do, that's where it goes. So you have to uh, kind of look ahead a few steps. And um, it's good. It's good to pre-read. Yeah. In sometimes. case there's something unusual that. Yeah. Well, comes if, up. if you can't fit something in, it helps to to, to look forward because then you can say, ah, that part is all the way inside this other part. Do this on. before that. <laughs> right. So you can say, okay, this must fit in this way. Um, the only way I'm going to get that in. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and that goes into B1. Uh, C, B, A, G, B. Now, I suppose if people are doing dioramas, they're yeah. going for a realistic look of mm -hmm. battle damage or... Yeah. Scars and that, that that I imagine is a whole different world of painting or Absolutely. decaling. Yeah, yeah. So you can do all sorts of stuff to simulate battle damage, to simulate uh, scarring and various things. And of course, uh, we have a lot of that from um, you know just war model kits. The folks doing that for um, tanks and such. So oh. a lot of that has been. Uh, Sort of transferred over to Gundam model kits, but there are some amazing dioramas of all these things that have gone through uh, the hell and back. <laughs> and of course, sometimes folks will want to represent a, a Gundam from a certain point where it has been, it was lost an arm or things like that. Oh, wow. Like. So sometimes you'll you get those moments of a Gundam that's been badly damaged. The shield that's smashed. <laughs> yeah. This awesome thing at one of the Gundam um, model kit conventions where they wanted to show a sequence where a, um, a mobile suit was flying around an object. Mm. So they made like 12 of the identical model kits 
and and set them up um, in sequence. You know, each one moving all the way around. Cool, brilliant idea. Okay, so that goes. You want that goes there. There we go. And then we have some kind of a another decal. Wow, lots of little decals. I think I'm going to. So here's one of the things. Sometimes the decals can wait for later. Sometimes they really can't. So that is 20. Because if you wait for later, then it's really hard to get in there. Hmm. So that's going to go. Yeah, I'm going to put that in now. You also notice sometimes these uh, kits, they'll have little tabs on them. So you notice kind of the slots there, here and here. See, there's a kind of a slot there and a slot Ooh, there and a yeah. slot there. That means to bend them over, fold them over. Ah, the folds, yeah, yes. Yes, so you fold them over so you get a nice, precise edge. It's good to have crisp edges. Yep. And then 19 on the other side. <laughs> yeah, um, some folks can 3D print guns. You can 3D print weapons for your uh, Gundam. A there Gundam go. gun. A Gundam gun. <laughs> and actually, 3D printing would be a pretty good um, thing for weapons for, for a Gundam because you don't need as, as high tolerances for, for a model kit. You don't need as high tolerances for that. You need to be able to fit into the hand. But other than that, it's basically um, just a, a relatively few angles. So 3D printing would be a, a good... Um, thing for toy guns. Mm -hmm. The problem with 3D printing real guns is plastic doesn't really hold up to explosive firing that much. Yeah. Sometimes, but 16 and 15. All right. So. But that opens up the whole category of, of potential for not only customizing, but customizing huge sections of the Gundam that yeah. are that, that, that Bandai never envisioned. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you can totally do some really special custom stuff to say, well, I have my own vision for how these, these shows should go. I want a gun that looks like something from a different genre altogether. Exactly. Or you can do a steampunk Gundam. A st <laughs> and also to that point, you can take things that have been designed for other scales and just put it at a scale suitable for your Gundam. Oh, so, resize. Yeah, so just resize it and it's good to go. Um, and then we're gonna do, ah, now we're doing the, the arm. So C10. You can see how this quickly becomes very absorbing. Yes. Once you get into it and sort of kind of understand how it all fits together, then it's just a kind of a matter of going piece by piece. C10, C31, and C21. Imagine, yeah, you know, there, there are people whose jobs it is to design these, to design exactly how these are laid out on the sheet. Now that could be pretty tricky, I imagine. From a, from not not only do you have to know how to make it work, but how to make it sound structurally, yeah. and how to lay it out for the most efficient use, and make sure that it's not going to uh, end up halfway baked, so to speak, <laughs> where only half of the plastic fills the holes, yep. and then the part is no longer usable. And that's why Sunrise wanted to specialize in these things because they can sit down with the toy company and say, "Okay, is this too complicated to build an ex a reasonable model kit out of?" You know, is this going to be something where our target audience of eight-year-olds is going to have to buy a sixty-dollar model kit because it's just that that complicated? <laughs> so ideally, you'll you'll get people um, trying to kind of working on how to make that make that work so that you you arrive at a good middle ground between what everyone's looking for, um, so that the mecha designer can design something that is reasonable, so to speak while the C23. Um, uh, so kind of everyone's happy. It's something that everyone can, can enjoy. Um, and it, it hits a, a nice minimal boundary. Um, what, is my, what is our favorite Gundam show? What's your favorite Gundam show? Well, I am a newbie 